The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello, and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist, Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by... The many guys with dubious facial hair that is Eric Velasquez. My pronouns are also he, him. (laughs) (laughs) So many fake mustaches. And I think a fake beard as well, but I'm not certain on that one. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) And like I, you know, the mustaches aren't necessary for the no. characters. No, I don't know why they either just got didn't get better mustaches or just not get mustaches at all if they can't afford them. Like, I mean, I don't know if this is true for anybody else, but I feel like just growing a mustache is is easy to do if you're you're male. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give you a couple weeks. Right. And yeah. I mean, it's gonna be better than. Like, what were their obligations and what what was their scheduling that they could not grow a mustache? This is some Henry Cavill level shit. <laughs> yeah, and these are straight up like, you know, you buy for your kid at like Halloween so they can yeah. just like spirit gum it onto their face. Right, and this is a spirit Halloween uh, set of mustaches and beards. Uh, <laughs> luckily, we do have an actual mustache uh, that is on a monster. <laughs> so that's something. We got uh, yeah. one real mustache. <laughs> Oh, I Lord. think Abe Lincoln's beard was real. Yeah. The other, the, the, the general, I don't know about his, but Abe Lincoln, I think, was legit. Right. Jeez. And yes, we're watching a Frankenstein movie that, that co-stars Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln. Yeah, this right. Week. Uh, we are, okay, this is, let's get this party started, because this is a wild fucking movie. Army of Frankensteins from, uh, what was it, 20, was it 2013 or 2018? 2018, I think 2013. 2013, okay. I just I was just hoping it was 2018. No, there's no reason it should have been. But, <laughs> I mean, I don't think we're on a B-movie level here, Anthony. I think we're firmly C. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've done a lot of movies in a row that have been very, like, smart, and there's been a lot of layers to uh, unpack. Mm-hmm. This one, no, not so much. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, it's quite stupid. And it, I, I, I think it actually knows what it is, so mm-hmm. it's entertaining oh, yeah. at least. Yeah, they they just you know took the little bit of budget they had, made the dumbest movie they could afford to make, and we're better off for it. I think. <laughs> I think so. Maybe. <laughs> it, uh, all right. Well, let's start off. Just like this movie, we're going to start in media res. Let's go. We've got a <laughs> gunfight in uh, Virginia in 1869. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah, we're in Virginia. We get the little Chiron on the screen and everything. And, yeah, right away we see, like, there's a, a guy bleeding out. His He's been hit in the stomach. It's like his guts are not out, but they're not, like, it's it's more than just a bullet hole. Like, he's, like, been hit with something. They are exposed to open air, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and we've got a, a nurse comforting him, a black woman, and then they're suddenly surrounded by Confederate soldiers. Uh-oh. This is not good news. Yep, definitely not. So, um, but then suddenly one of the soldiers is shot. Right in the fucking head. There's a bunch yeah. of just random headshots. <laughs> Which is like, you know, back then with those kind of guns, headshots were, were not an easy thing to just do. <laughs> yeah. So in the process, she manages to escape. The nurse does. And um, is then... She's quickly caught up by one of the Confederate soldiers, right? Yeah. Well, well, it turns out this is just what she's won, because this is her baby boy, Jimmy. Which, weird, very weird choice. Very weird choice. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of, like, gather here that, like, you know, she was an enslaved person and and has been freed. Mm -hmm. um, Or not freed, he let her escape. So he didn't even actually, like, do the paperwork to free her. 
Um, Which, that's bad. That, that's gross. That's even worse. Yeah, yeah. So now she's, you know, not really free because she can be, you know, recaptured at any time. Mm-hmm. But he's like, you know, I care about you. I wanted to let you, you go, and but I wish you would go to safety instead of, you know, helping the Union in the war. Like, I, I wanted you to be safe, not in the middle of a battlefield. I, I mean, arguably understandable, but also it's coming from... <laughs> You know, a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. But apparently they, they ain't got no time for that because it's fucking time. Uh, they, <laughs> they just start stripping the clothes off each other. And it's real awkward. Like, this yeah. scene is... I don't know if this is intentionally awkward or just, like, you know, actors who are not used to doing this kind of thing and are uncomfortable doing, doing it. But, yeah, it definitely looks uncomfortable. Well, you know what? At least we don't have to worry about it being uncomfortable for long because look at that. Look at that entire army of copy-pasted Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> just, just done in uh, Adobe After Effects. Uh, amazing. Yep, and this this movie is definitely, if, if nothing else, it is going to deliver on its title. It, there will be armies of Frankenstein. <laughs> And, like, literally, people will say that phrase more yeah, than know. once in this movie. <laughs> I, I, literally, we'll get to it, but there was a point where I literally pointed at the screen and I was like, they said the thing! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, where it's, were we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we see this army, and like you said, it's, like, it's one guy that they have, like, just duplicated over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, he comes up to the Confederate soldier rips off his arm and then drags him away. Oh, oh, don't forget, he not only does he rip off his arm, he slaps him in the face with it. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, I mean if you tear off somebody's arm, you gotta you slap gotta him in the slap face him. with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lesson to all of you. If you rip somebody's arm, you gotta slap slap him in the face with it. Uh but yes, yeah, so uh Jimmy gets a drug off to some place. Uh, probably to get, like, just demolished by uh, Frankensteins. Uh, then the nurse, who we'll find out her name is Maggie, runs off. And then we just cut to 150 years later. Yeah, and I was, like, when that happened, I was like, wait, I thought this whole movie was set in the Civil War. I uh, This is going to be a very different movie than I expected. Oh, is it, Anthony? <laughs> this is going to be a very different movie. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, we meet a guy. We'll find out his name is Alan. He's like kind of getting dressed up in his apartment. He's and listening sort of to the most 80s, like preparing for a date song ever, even though this is supposed to be the the uh, 2010s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like super montagey. You know, it's like him straightening his tie and like adjusting, you know, the knickknacks around his house. Like he's trying to get everything perfect. Clearly, like a date is happening, mm-hmm. and then we see that you know he's also got an engagement ring. So like. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the proposal's coming, so everything's got to be perfect. Right, right. Well, I mean, it can't be too perfect because he has uh, burnt um, TV dinners prepared for the both of them. <laughs> yeah. With a nice bottle of wine, of course. Yeah, he and like wilted flowers. Right. Like, yeah, this guy's definitely broke. Yeah. He knew what to um, splurge on. Probably. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't have cheap box wine or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and so he kind of gets everything arranged and he sits down to take a break and he's kind of like sifting through the mail and he has an ad from ForgottenRelatives.com, which is just bootleg Ancestry.com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and the letter tells him that he had a relative named Solomon Jones who fought in the Civil War and lost an arm in battle. Okay. I wonder if that'll come back up. Interesting. We already have one guy who lost an arm. Yeah, that was my first thought was like, is this, so is his ancestor the, you know, the Confederate soldier we just saw? Because it seems like a strange thing to tie our hero, or potentially hero, to a Confederate soldier. Oh no, we get someone better, someone who's more of a mega man, you know? (laughs) Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well anyway, also the news comes on. And we have a uh, lady by the name of a uh, news lady by the name of Aubrey reporting on, you know, basically giving us uh, exposition. There's been a lot of grave thefts happening re- uh, recently. Uh, for some reason, the individuals are only taking a couple pieces here and there. Uh, and at the end of the report, she says, "Unfortunately, they weren't left resting in pieces." Or, ha 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 ha. I literally wrote down, "Fuck you, lady." That's my joke. <laughs> 
damn it. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I mean, like you know, we're watching a Frankenstein movie when they're like, "Hey, there's graves being robbed. We we know what's up." Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And at that point, he hears a knock at the door and goes to answer it, assuming that this is the you know the girlfriend that he's waiting on. And instead, it's his drunk landlady, Mrs. Henderson. Just walks right on in as soon as he like touches the door, basically. Mm-hmm. We could already tell he's kind of broke, but you know, we find out he's late on rent. Uh, she wants you know wants money right away. Well, and then also warning: <laughs> it's played off for laughs, but it's still sexual assault. <laughs> so, Miss Henderson is like, "Hey, you can pay your money. You can pay your rent one of two ways." On, yeah, she says like you, we could work something out, you know. Um, yeah. And then she, you know, he's like, you know, no, you know, I've I've got a girlfriend. I'm. In, she's like, oh, that slut. I mm-hmm. saw her kissing Mister Mustache Man down at the grocery. What you mean, Eugene? You know, at this point, it's like I don't know that this lady's the most trustworthy lady right. anyway. But like, you know, obviously, Alan's curious about what she's talking about there. He does finally get her out. And sits well, she, down. She gives him the. Uh, she gives him an additional alternative, right? If he doesn't want to put out, uh, he can either find the money or he can give her the ring. Yeah. So once she leaves, he sits down in front of his burnt TV dinner mm-hmm. and gets a text from his girlfriend that unfortunately she has to work late. So maybe they can do dinner tomorrow instead. Well, he decides he wants to pay her a visit at the uh, grocery store. And what's that? That that looks like lightning and thunder, Anthony. <laughs> Yep, you know, we gotta have that. Okay. And yeah, I wonder here, like, is this more like, oh, I'm sorry, you gotta work late, I'm gonna just go stop in and say hi, or is it like, hey, I heard this rumor, and I kinda wanna see what's up? Oh, it, it most certainly feels like the latter. Yeah. He goes inside, and he does, he sees her stalking a shelf, but let, then, like, kinda ducks behind an end cap before she can see him. Well, well, there's also this old guy who's just out front, and for some reason, Alan feels like he needs to tell the old guy, Hey, it's about to rain. Maybe you should go inside. Like, he doesn't know it's about to rain. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're going to keep getting these, like, little shots with two sort of suspicious figures that we'll eventually get to, to know a little better. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the old guy out front, and then uh, we'll also, throughout this grocery scene, we will occasionally see, like, another guy in a hoodie yeah. who's, like, out in the parking lot up to no good. Mm-hmm. Those hoodies. But yeah, so after after um, Alan hides uh, from Ashley, he uh, bumps into the old man again, and now he's like looking through greeting cards, and he says he, his eyes are bad, and he wants Alan to read a greeting card to him so he knows what it says. Right, and Alan, uh, he doesn't exactly read the card. I think he's <laughs> projecting a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, he basically, like, he starts reading the card, and then it just devolves into him practicing his proposal to Ashley. The old man's like, I don't think that's what the card says. <laughs> and he's like, oh, oh, right, yeah. It says you're exactly what I've been looking for. And I think the old man agrees. He's like, yes, you are exactly what I've been looking for. <laughs> Which, okay, that's weird. Yeah, it's super creepy, and, and Alan's like, wait, what? And he's like... Yes, uh, you are going to have to work on your proposal to Ashley. You're a little mm-hmm. shaky. You still need to, to work on that a bit. And he's like, okay, and kind of hands the card and, and disappears. Yeah, then we get a cut to Ashley, who walks in in Eugene's office and is like, hey, I've done everything I'm supposed to do for the night. Can I just go home? Yeah, and Eugene is Gross. terrible. <laughs> like, yeah. he, he, like, is hitting on her. She's not interested. He kind of, like corners her you know there this is a small little office and she's kind of you know he's between her and the door um so yeah just all around not good and then we cut back to alan who's now looking for ashley again and another worker's like oh yeah she's she went to the back um she's probably in eugene's office uh so alan's like okay yeah i'm you know that that definitely gets his suspicion going right and then for some reason we get a shot of the old man shooting off a text and then we get the individual you mentioned in the hoodie, they're getting ready to do something. What that is, yeah. we don't know. Yeah. Uh, and so then Alan comes into the back and through the office window, he sees right as Eugene kisses Ashley against her will, yeah. Yeah. but he doesn't really see that part of it. Um, and, you know, storms off angry. All right. So I get it why she probably didn't react in the moment, but the fact that she went back. Well, okay, we'll get there eventually. We'll, we'll have a discussion <laughs> about that. 
Because yeah, is I rough. mean, presumably, then this means that the uh, the landlady was right telling the truth, and that this has happened previously. So clearly, Ashley is in an uncomfortable situation. Maybe feels that this she needs this job, and so she's got to tolerate yeah. Eugene or whatever. But yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, not a good situation for anyone to be in. No. Um, and then, yeah, you know, the added layer of what Alan saw does look bad. You know, it's one of those, this, this isn't what it looks like things. But, you know, what it looks like is that, you know, she is, you know, fooling around with her boss, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on the side or whatever. Uh, and so Alan doesn't see that as he walks away, she slaps Eugene and, you know, runs out of the office. Right. She runs up to Alan at the checkout line. He's got a gallon of milk, and he doesn't have money to pay for it. And he's like, can I borrow $5? Very angrily, too. He's like, oh, I'm so mad. I'm not going to talk to you, but ask you to borrow $5. And she's like, why don't (laughs) you trust trust me? And Okay, fair enough. But also he did, you know, there, there needs to be a couple more words said between these two. Yeah, like they need to go have a conversation outside and, like, work it out. Like, you know, the, this is, it, it's a heat of the moment thing where he's angry and she's upset and she knows that it looks bad and, you know, but it's hard for her to communicate that in the midst of everything that's going on in the middle of her job, you know, that's not not a great time. Right, but then we get a cut to the, the kid or the hoodie hot wiring a car. So that's mm-hmm. interesting. What's going on with that, I wonder? Yeah, and like, at, uh, I think the first time we see him, it's pretty indeterminate, but this time, like you said, you can tell that this is like a younger person. This is mm-hmm. this is not like an adult. Alan gets like storms out of the store. He says he's not going to pay her the $5 mm-hmm. back. Uh, and he just goes, first he gets in his car and just kind of like yells and hits the steering wheel for a couple minutes and then decides to go on a walk. And is instantly followed by like central casting bad Thug. guys. Yeah, <laughs> like Thug he's yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Um, and he's he's still carrying his gallon of milk, uh, and they end up in a dark alley where you don't want to be followed by two thugs. Right, but, and, but literally, Alan did that to himself, right? <laughs> yeah, you can just keep walking, man. You don't have to go down an alley. Yeah, yeah, he goes, like, I mean, he's cornered himself. He's gone to the worst possible place. Mm -hmm. The two guys, they attack him. He tries to fight back with the milk. Yeah, he sucker punches a guy with a a gallon of milk. (laughs) Which is a pretty good move. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, now he's out of weapons and is in trouble. But then the kid with the hoodie shows up and reveals that he's got a gun. And that Well, also, it reveals that, like, he hired these thugs. To attack Alan, because they're like, "Hey, where, are you gonna pay us our money?" And then he pulls uh, out the gun and he gives the most classically '80s line of all time: "Checks in the mail." <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they run off, and then um, the kid hands Alan this like rod that then suddenly extends like magically, and then is immediately struck by lightning. Right. And KO'd, not not murdered, not electric, full out electrocuted. He's just shocked. And the kid, of course, puts on some good old mad scientist goggles while the lightning is striking. Yeah. Then we get so, a fade yeah. to black, and some heartbeats are going on. So it's yeah. like, oh, we know Alan's in trouble now. It's, the field of vision has a little red around it, and uh, <laughs> you know, it's a very video game esque. Yeah, his health meters low. <laughs> exactly. He's taking too much damage. Uh, yeah. And so then, yeah, Alan wakes up in, like, a, a, a science lab. The kid's there, but so is the weird old man. Hmm. So they were in cahoots all along. Oh, no. And then, like, pretty much with, like, very little fanfare, they just yank out one of Alan's eyeballs. <laughs> no shit, man. <laughs> well, they, like, first they inject him with uh, this green reagent, basically. Yeah. And then, uh, then just yank out that eyeball. By the way, probably shouldn't do that if you plan on putting into a monster's skull. <laughs> I feel like it would damage the optical nerves somewhat, you know? Yeah, not not the uh, ideal way to to remove an eyeball if you're wanting it to be reused. No. I do like the fact that he's, like, partially awake for this. <laughs> so right. It's like, oh, you're going to feel everything. Nice. Yeah, and they're like, you know, that was the last part we needed. We can finally bring our creature to life. But contrary to every other Frankenstein story we've ever seen, the old guy's like, we're going to have to wait till the storm is past because 
if lightning strikes, it could cause a surge and cause problems with the reanimation process. Oh, wait, but 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 that's not how this is supposed to go. Like, this <laughs> helps everything, right? right? That's what we want. Yeah. You know, the old man, like, leaves uh, leaves the, the kid to watch Alan. Mm-hmm. Alan's all drugged up, and he looks over and sees the creature next to him, and he's like, tell me that's not a Frankenstein. <laughs> right. <laughs> And it's like, oh, yep, you know, you know what's up. <laughs> yeah. And so he's all, you know, he's drugged and he gets up and starts kind of stumbling around and he hits a giant, like, lever type switch in the ground right. and starts the reanimation process. Oh, no, he's activating the nanobots. That's apparently what the switch did. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, it's like an old time, it's like a the kind of switch you would see on like railroad tracks or something you know but somehow it's to control nanobots it's like the oldest looking technology controlling like the newest technology yeah I, I, yeah <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason to this movie <laughs> uh and so yep then a bunch of like lasers come down from the ceiling and the uh the frankenstein monster starts to wake up and the old man comes rushing in and is like, oh, he he's alive. It, it, it's it's working. It's alive. And then of course the warning goes off immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Suddenly, you know, there's like lightning, and you know, it's causing uh, issues with the the process. And suddenly, there are an army of Frankenstein's. It just keeps duplicating. Right. And it just come out of nowhere. Old, it seems like. Yeah, and the old man's like, "You've ruptured the multiverse, you fool!" Damn it! <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah. Right. <laughs> fade to black again and we've got alan who is dreaming of proposing to ashley he's proposing to her and she's like no (laughs) this is my break (laughs) at work you can do better (laughs) yeah and like she stands up and goes wake up alan then all of a sudden it turns into miss henderson wake up alan (laughs) you know and then we, of course, that's when we switch to the soldier screaming, wake up! Uh, the soldier drags Alan into, like, a med tent. The old man is there also and, you know, seems to be in pretty bad shape. We have a nurse rush in saying that there's, you know, a bunch of monsters outside. Mm-hmm. We find out that the soldier who rescued Alan is um, Solomon. So this is his, you know, I don't think we mentioned the name earlier, but yeah, this Paul is his Jones. his ancestor from the relative ForgottenRelatives.com, Solomon. <laughs> Jones. But hey, he's got two arms. I thought Solomon only had one. Yeah. Where are those well, four shadows coming from? <laughs> Cut back to outside and we see the army of Frankensteins kind of like stomping through a battle that is going on and they, they're not on either side. So they're just killing Confederate soldiers, Union soldiers. They don't care. In very creative um, ways, I might add. <laughs> Yeah, like the the gore in this, it's it's definitely cheap and some of it's CGI, but it's still abundant and like uh, yeah, like interesting ideas. So it, it's still fun. Like he he definitely like stomps some dudes' heads and right. you know punches hearts out and you know some some good rips off a few more arms eggs. here and there. <laughs> yeah, um, but also our uh, kid is in the midst of this battle as well, so he's kind of trying to like get to safety, uh, and he finds the you know syringe of reagent and is you know preparing to do something with it but then you know a rebel soldier grabs him and is like what's that and he's like you need to give me that i can it made these monsters and maybe it can stop them and he's like well then if it can stop them i'm keeping (laughs) right keeping it i'm not giving it to some random kid so then we cut back into the med tent and we find out that because frankenstein has alan's eye Alan can sometimes see what Frankenstein sees. Mm -hmm. I guess that has something to do with multiverse stuff. Sure. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) Yeah, why not? (laughs) Well, anyway, we we didn't mention this earlier, but the old man, like, briefly wakes up as Maggie also rushes into the tent. And he's like, "Uh, my body's too old to survive. Basically saying, (laughs) I'm dying. And it's right around this time that uh, he basically does. Uh, he just like sits up and's like, "Hey, if you kill one like our monster, they're all gonna die." Yeah, it's basically like because this is a multiversal thing. There's like Frankenstein Prime, and he's the only one that really matters. Um, and he, yeah, so the the old man sort of like enlists Alan. Like you've gotta you've gotta defeat the monsters so that the you can reopen the rift and you can go back home and you can take Igor with you. That's right. where we find out that this kid's name is Igor. Igor. 
Amazing. I wonder how he got that name. It must be a silly <laughs> story. Anyway, yeah, so Alan finally wakes up and realizes, hey, we're actually in the Civil War. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, it's really funny because he's like, we can't defeat an army of Frankensteins. Yeah, hey. And then... <laughs> Then, like, one of the, the nurses is like, what's a Frankenstein? And <laughs> Igor's like, they're not called Frankensteins. I mean, they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the, so then the nurse is like, you know, where are you all from? What is going on here? And Alan picks up a gun and is like, we're from the future, and it's time to kick some Frankenstein ass. Right. And fires off the gun for no reason on accident. <laughs> <laughs> like surprises himself he's like oh shit right. <laughs> I don't know how to use a musket like, <laughs> at this point like you know what kind of movie you're in like this this movie is gonna be just dumb as hell I but, appreciate you know, it does not take itself seriously at all yeah. now we then we cut over to the confederate outpost where we meet I'm gonna say he's probably the best actor in this movie but he's also the biggest asshole yeah like like this is confederate blofeld like he has the whole confederate well it's not really a confederate flag but nobody gives a shit it's what we know is the confederate flag and he's like like stroking his cat so that you know he's <laughs> right. super evil and yes. he, oh, of course he's bald as well so you know bald stroking cat evil flag gotcha all right we know what this guy's about yeah, Captain and we'll, we'll eventually find out that his name is Captain Robert E. Walton. So right. we kind of have Robert Walton from the, the Mary Shelley novel and Robert E. Lee <laughs> blended mm. together into uh, this villain. But yeah, so that dumb uh, mustache guy that uh, showed up earlier and took the uh, gun from the kid, uh, or the sedative, or whatever the reagent is, <laughs> yeah. sh uh, shows up, but he's ordered to shoot some survivors. It turns out that there were only two survivors of this fight with the monsters mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're all like in seriously bad shape <laughs> yeah. like they're they're survivors but just barely right so walt's uh, like eh shoot them <laughs> yeah and, uh, and the guy's like I, I can't just they're our soldiers and he's like you know we need to conserve meds so right. he just shoots them instead walton does and is like follow orders next time like i'm not gonna put up with this next time it's gonna be you if you don't listen to me right never hesitate or you may also end up dead Walton then suggests, if we can take their camp, we can win this war, because he's not concerned about fucking monsters running <laughs> loose on the battlefield. Yeah, and the lieutenant is like, we've got bigger problems right now, but I do have this syringe, maybe this will help. Like, I, I, this kid said that it had something to do with the monsters. The captain, yeah, like you said, he's, he's more concerned about the war, or the battle, I guess. And then we cut away to Solomon, who is now alone in the woods. And Alan finds him and is like, hey, I'm pretty sure you're my great-great-grandpa. <laughs> well, yeah, this, is, this actually is kind of the start of a gag, because Alan just surprises him out of nowhere. He spins and points the gun at him. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he's like, he tells him that. And then like a second or so later, who is it who comes in? Is it Igor immediately after that, or is, is it Virginia? Huh? It's Igor and then Virginia pretty much right on his heels. Right, but but each time they, like, swing and pull the gun on them. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, Virginia is... So, it's kind of confusing. We have, we have two nurses that are both former, you know, formerly enslaved. For, there's, it's Virginia and Maggie. We're um, going to find out they that they're will, sisters. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, we've got Virginia here, and she has agreed, or she wants to team up. That Like, this this ragtag group, these four people, uh, Alan, Igor, Solomon, and Virginia, they're going to team up and fight the Frankensteins. Right, and, of course, Solomon's going to flirt with Virginia because he says, listen, I could take ten of them out with just one arm. Huh, <laughs> four fucking shadows again. Where the fuck? <laughs> Uh, yep, so then we cut back to the Confederate outpost, and Walton's like, okay, let's let's see what this syringe can do. And to really show how evil he is, he just fucking injects his own cat with it to see what will happen. Right, and I like that he makes, uh, we're going to find out that the, the guy's name is Lieutenant Swanson, the one with the bad mustache. So he tells him, hey, shut the flaps, because we have to see what this thing does, but only in silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> because as yeah, they this is the like cat, we don't have the budget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As they inject the cat, it basically turns into Gollum, or at least the outline of Gollum. 
and then like yeah. rushes out the other side of the tent. Yeah, so we're not we you know we can't afford like an American werewolf in no. Paris or London. London. No, dear God, not Paris. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I'm sure it would have looked like American werewolf in Paris. Yeah. Yeah, but we're not going to do a transformation sequence mm-hmm. here for sure. Um, but yeah, so then um, at that point we cut back to um, our heroes. They're like, we've lost the trail of the Frankenstein's, and Alan. Alan's like, how did you? It's a hundred big monsters. How did you lose the trail? And Solomon's like, feel free to track them down yourself if you're better at this than me. Right? Why don't you uh, do your eye thing, Alan? <laughs> And then he does, and he's like, okay, the, the monsters are attacking a balloon? Mm. And Solomon's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know, where, I know, I know the balloon. exactly where that balloon is. <laughs> that like, one balloon. <laughs> right. Uh, and so they start heading in the direction of the, uh, the hot air balloon. While they're going, like, Alan and Igor are arguing about this experiment and what the old man was up to. And he's like, you know, you stole my fucking eye. Like, like you guys right. aren't the good guys. I don't know why I should trust anything that you all say. But Igor's like, you just, you just don't know him like I do. Like, there's a reason for all this. And it's important work, what we're doing. Yeah, what that reason is, we're never really going <laughs> to find out what that is. No, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. It's important work, though. Yeah. They find the balloon, they see all the the monsters attacking, and Igor's like, we gotta find our Frankenstein. Pretty much right away, Alan, like, again sees out of his eye and is like, oh, it's that one. Right, it's right behind him. <laughs> yeah, that's easy enough. <laughs> they try to fight him, but, like, you know, he's... This part was really strange, so they, like, uh, they attack the monster, they... Uh, he gets, like, cut across the face, and it, like, pretty much heals immediately, Right, but uh, all the other monsters are like, ow. Yeah, and but somehow in the process, Virginia ends up in the hot air balloon basket, and then the monster follows her. So now we have our prime Frankenstein that we need in the hot air balloon with Virginia, mm-hmm. and Alan's right away like, uh, she's probably dead. It looked like he was going to attack her. Right. But I don't know what, because it's not that the, like, the monster doesn't carry her into the, she gets into the balloon right, of the her own accord. Right, the kind of falls into the basket of the balloon with her. Yeah, yeah, so I'm not sure what her plan was, but yeah. it did not go well. I mean, I feel like if you're doing that, you may want to just hop on the other side, just in case the monster <laughs> could get in there and you just let it go up, but who am I? I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I don't live in Civil War times. <laughs> right. Uh, and, you know, Solomon is upset. He was like, you know, I, I wanted to marry her. Like, we, you know, I loved her. At that point, like, while he's sad about his fallen apart relationship, Igor's like, you know, Alan, when you get back to our time, like, you should trust that Ashley girl. You should, you know, you should fix things and propose to her. <laughs> like, you should learn from this guy. You know, things can go south suddenly and you might regret not taking the right actions. And then he also reiterates if we killed the one, our frank the rest of them will go as well so and you can get back to ashley then yeah and so then we we cut back to the balloon and actually virginia's okay she has figured out that if she sings songs she can soothe the savage beast but i'm gonna as our friend don would say i'm gonna play the awkward piano <laughs> because she starts singing a spiritual like song an enslaved spiritual song mm-hmm. that's not cool <laughs> this movie doesn't yeah. get to do that yeah, that's the weird thing about this movie is like it's super dumb and that's great and everything, but like when you're dealing with the Civil War and enslavement and stuff like that, that's a a strange thing to be playing for laughs. Um, and it most of the time manages to thread the needle okay, where it like doesn't get in. You know, like we're not gonna see like you know, slaves being whipped and stuff. Like, we're not going to get into the brutal side of slavery. This is a very um, sanitized version, for sure. Yeah. Um, which, if you're going to try to make this into a comedy, that's really the only way you can do it. But yeah, in this point, it is. it does feel that a little co-optive, I guess. Like, uh, it, yeah, it doesn't feel like what should be happening in this moment. I, I feel like she should probably be, probably be singing just some old tiny hymn. You know, mm-hmm. and that would work just as well, if not better. It's like movie. I, I, I appreciate that you're trying to make a statement, but maybe this isn't the movie with that statement. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and like to kind of to further emphasize what they were trying to do here. Um, her 
her like dress is torn on the back and Frankenstein sees that she has scars on her back, you know, from being whipped as a slave and he pulls open his shirt and reveals his like surgical scars from being created um, and they kind of like have a connection and I th- there's probably a way you could make a really poignant Frankenstein movie that deals with slavery but this is not, not that it. movie so this <laughs> scene that. feels very strange yeah it, it gets but they do somehow bring it around because at this point she's like listen you know you and me we have this connection right if you help the north fight the confederates which is like okay now we're moving back to big dumb movie time right <laughs> then, yeah. then we can surely win this war and it's like yeah. she's hyping up Frankenstein to Jory and her team and he's all about it he's like yeah <laughs> Yeah, and then we cut down to the ground, and all of the army of Frankenstein is all, yeah, like, <laughs> fists raised in the air. They're pumped. They're ready. They've got a purpose now. You know, they were just kind of indiscriminately stomping around, but now they, like, they, you know, they have a goal. They have something that they're actually trying to do. So that's uh, that's good news for all of our, uh, you know, Union soldiers, for sure. Right. Now, unfortunately, we don't get to dwell on this too long because all of a sudden the air is bombed. Uh, and <laughs> just randomly a, uh, I guess cannonball maybe hits the balloon. I guess, yeah. Sure, why not? Maybe it's a musket ball. Who knows? Anyway, the point is they just, the balloon immediately deflates and they drop. It's the yeah. best CGI ever, guys. <laughs> right. And so then it's like, okay, maybe they, you know, we already thought she died once, but that sounds pretty bad, so... Um, but then we we cut away. We don't see what happens, um, and we're back with Alan, who is it's at, it's kind of nighttime. He's gathering firewood. He stumbles upon a dead body, which scares him, and he kind of runs back to Igor and Solomon. And Solomon's like, you know, it's a war. There's dead bodies <laughs> everywhere. That's <laughs> that's the way it goes. Right. You should do what I do. And he takes a nip off the old flask. And he passes along. Alan, Alan takes it too, but then they decide. Let's give let's give Igor here a shot. And of course, <laughs> Igor's a kid. And he's like, maybe you shouldn't be giving this to me. I'm underage. <laughs> and you know, of course, he takes a nip and he doesn't like it. Makes sense. Yeah. But then, then we get Igor's backstory. Yeah, which I kind of think is probably not true. Um, <laughs> okay. <I know. laughs> but so, like Igor says, like basically, you know, the doctor found him, the, the old man. He found him in a abandoned as a baby in a dumpster, and you know, so he raised him as his own, and you know, decided to name him Igor because he was fascinated with the Frankenstein story and wanted to be um, a scientist himself. But it kind of feels like that's the story that the old man told Igor, mm-hmm. and that possibly you know Igor was stolen or something, right? Or uh, or what I hope is true is like Igor is actually the son, the future son. Well, yeah, okay, I guess we could say that. Possibly the future son of Alan and Ashley. We're never going <laughs> to find out where he actually comes from, but in my head canon, that's the truth. Because it gets funnier if you go <laughs> later on. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. that's... The <laughs> but yeah, either way, so he's very, you know, he clearly, like, is very loyal to the old man because, you know, he, he thinks that he saved his life, basically, you know, so, so, you know, he tells them, like, that there was a syringe and that, like, if they can get it back, that might be the way that they can stop Frankenstein Prime. Now, of course, it just it just resurrected the Frankenstein monster because it was already dead, but who knows what it could do if exposed to living things. Hmm? <laughs> And this isn't even foreshadows because yeah, yeah, literally the second he says, <laughs> "These guys yeah, have gone yeah. by long, long time ago." No, but also <laughs> um, counterpoint: What the fuck happened to Alan then? Why isn't he super powered? Oh yeah, because he did inject Alan as well. Like, or 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 if you you're in a serious grievous injury, does it just stabilize you? Like, what is the this is some fuckery <laughs> with the syringe? What does it right. do? Uh, yeah. That makes, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Um, it's full of plot holes, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's subatomic plot holes. Yeah. And so, yeah, the uh, the cat monster comes, you know, bursting into the campsite, immediately just rips off Solomon's <laughs> arm. Ah, oh, there it is. We finally got that payoff. <laughs> yeah. And then Igor, like, uses some stuff laying around and just makes a bomb that he explodes the cat monster with. Yeah, he's like, could you hand me some of your gunpowder and a little bit of that whiskey? And he passes the Molotov. 
Yeah. It's just like, here she is, he tosses it directly, at, lights it on fire, and tosses it directly into the cat's mouth. Or cat thing's mouth. And it just goes pop and <laughs> explodes. <laughs> yeah. With, yeah, like, you know, CGI explosions like that are oh, some of the worst CGI. They, they never look good. <laughs> I mean, this is the... Listen, whoever paid for this subscription of After Effects got their money's worth. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yep. And so, yeah, then at that point, um, we cut to the Frankenstein carrying Virginia. So mm-hmm. they survive. They're both okay. And then, like, later they sit down to rest. And this scene feels like it's sort of nodding to the Maria scene from the original. They're sitting there together, and she picks a flower and hands it to him. Yeah, there's, like, a pi- pile of, what are those, sunflowers? Sunflowers or daisies or something. Mm-hmm. One of those kind of, like, petaled sort of flowers. Yeah, who put all those flowers at her feet? Was it the, <laughs> was it the monster? Was he yeah, like, I, I like these flowers for this nice lady? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, she gives him one, and he eats it. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, no, silly, that's not what you do with flowers. So she takes another one and tucks it in, like, the uh, breast pocket of his, you know, Frankenstein suit jacket. Right, conveniently denoting which one is Frankenstein Prime. Yep. (laughs) And if you don't catch that that's what it's for, they will later explicitly (laughs) say, it's the Frankenstein with the flower. Yep. At that point, they are surrounded by the rebels, you know, and like, you know, we've got our lieutenant again who threatens Virginia. And that's the way that he's able to, like, control the Frankenstein. Like, he's not going to let Virginia get hurt. Basically, yeah, I may not be able to hurt you, but I can definitely hurt her. Then we cut away to the heroes who have gotten the recently amputated armed Solomon back to the med tent. They're working on him. And then Alan sees that Frankenstein and Virginia have been captured. Hey, they're still alive. As far as they knew, like Frankenstein would have killed Virginia. So this is, you know, good news that she's okay. Yeah. And he actually gets to see for a little bit some of the Confederate soldiers harassing uh, Virginia and the monster. And then um, Captain Walton is like, okay, so we know that this syringe can do some pretty great stuff to a cat. So, Lieutenant, go ahead and inject yourself. His line of reasoning is amazing. (laughs) It's like, instead of, like, injecting it into other things that we could possibly just shoot and kill, I'm going to inject this into my most loyal lieutenant. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, which, like, he could have just used even, like, a random soldier would have been better than, you know, his... Next in command. But nope, he don't give no shit. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, so our uh, our good lieutenant uh, immediately starts, uh, like, glowing a little bit of green, almost hulking out, and starts puking up blood, and he gets a little bit of that Freddy Krueger face, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, he's got, like, weird lumps and, like, holes in his skin. Like, yeah, I, I, I... I wrote, he turns into a lumpy zombie, and that's pretty much, yeah. I just call him Lieutenant Zombie for the rest of right. the Right. He grows about, what, two feet? And he actually gets mm-hmm. a real mustache now. <laughs> right. The actor has a real mustache. Because, this, yeah, this is just a completely different actor yeah. at this point. Mm-hmm. Walton, surprisingly, like, this new monster is like, should I kill the girl and the, mo- the other monster? And he's like, no, let them go. I-, I want them to tell the Union what's coming because fear is the first step in our plan, and then you're the second step. Right. I mean, I guess, sure. Normally surprises are better, but... (laughs) (laughs) Right, yeah. Who am I? I'm not a Civil War, like, captain, so I don't know. (laughs) And then we just get a brief scene. Igor is kind of, like, sifting through... Like, near the camp, we've got, like wreckage from the science lab that was pulled through the portal and he finds a beaker full of more of the green reagent right and he drinks it and then nothing Nothing ever comes of it just just downs it what the fuck yeah i I mean i don't know if maybe you it only works if you inject it but nothing happens from this as far as i like i am am i forgetting anything like literally nothing happens with either okay like he just Uh, he just takes a shot of reagent (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's a huge plot hole. Like, they could have just not had that happen. <laughs> well, okay. There's a... It's kind of a blink and you'll miss it, but it is explained. Okay. It's explained at the end. Yeah, there, the, yeah there's the time stuff at the end, but okay. okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to we'll it. We'll get to it. 
Um, but yes, at this point, it's like, what the fuck is going on? Why would this kid just <laughs> down this stuff that he knows is possibly mutagenic? Yeah. So at that point, like while he's sitting there drinking that, a bunch of Frankenstein monsters walk past and they don't try to kill him. So he's like, you know, of course, they don't know about all of the stuff that's happened with Virginia. So mm -hmm. they don't know that the monsters are now loyal to the Union. Right. But then we also get a shot of some soldiers that are like, yep, we're going to retreat. Fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in fact, like, the, yeah, Frankenstein and Virginia arrive and the Union's still just like, nah, we're out. And Virginia's like, but we have an army no, of Frankenstein. Like, yeah, this is our chance. Like, we can turn the war right here, right now. Like, we've got our, you know, our soldiers. We've got this giant army of indestructible monsters. Like, this is how we end the Civil War. Finally, the guys are like, okay, we'll, we'll stay. We'll fight. So then we pretty much just cut to, like, a nighttime camp scene. You know, people are sitting around a campfire. There are people playing, you know, old-timey music and dancing and all that. Right. Well, right before that, hold on. We got, we got to take a step back because we get a name drop where she's like, yeah, the North is going to win with our army of Frankenstein. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, as promised, that gets said twice in this movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and but this time, yeah, like you said, there is like a, a swell of music. Like this is this is our moment. Like now, the <laughs> army of Frankenstein's is our army of Frankenstein's. Yeah. So then we just have like people kind of dancing, enjoying the night before the big battle. Virginia's sister Maggie, Maggie yeah. pulls her aside and is like, "While well, this is going on, this is our chance. We can leave. We can flee to the north." We can, you know, get away from this war, go to safety. And Virginia's like, but no, it's our duty to fight. Like, we still have family that are enslaved. Like, we have got to make sure that our side wins this war. Fair enough. Maggie, she's kind of still not fully on board, but she's like, all right, I'll stick around. Like, yeah. there's definitely, like, some... The vibes from Maggie are not great. Right, well, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because she saw these things, like, rip her boyfriend apart. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you know, I, I I can understand that I guess, but right. then we cut yeah. to Igor. He's tinkering with something in uh, in this tent. So and Maggie comes in, and so he's like playing around with this thing, and Igor just happens to mention to Maggie that really only the one Frankenstein is vulnerable. All the rest are indestructible as long as Frankenstein Prime is safe. Why do I feel like that was a bad idea? <laughs> Yeah, it, it definitely, like, as soon as he says it, you, you, you can just feel like, oh, no, right. this is going to go somewhere bad. Yep. So then we find out that the thing he's working on is a super cannon arm for Solomon. Yep. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, I never and thought he... I wanted to see a Mega Man movie until now. <laughs> this is a pretty good Mega Man movie. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and so... Pretty much from there, like Maggie is like, this is you're you're turning him into a monster now. This is not what you know what you should be doing. Right. Uh, but Solomon's down. He's like, all right, show me how to use this thing, kid. <laughs> right. And immediately we cut to them uh, outside and uh, with uh, the new gun arm attached, and uh, like Igor just slaps up a smiley face, <laughs> and Solomon's like, what the fuck is this? He's like, it's a bad guy. He's like, he doesn't look that bad to me. So then Igor just draws an eye patch. By the way, when he draws the eye patch, it makes him look almost like Alan. Yeah, <laughs> Which, that's what I w I wondered. Like, is it like the the stereotype of like bad guys in movies with eye patches, or is he supposed to be like, oh, it's Alan? I feel like it's Alan because there's definitely a rivalry, lo like a love hate rivalry between Alan and Solomon. Yeah, that's because like. It, that hasn't really come out to the forefront yet, but like it, we soon will see that Alan and you know, or that Solomon has some jealousy towards Alan. Yeah, well, it's earned. But yeah, so immediately uh, Solomon is like, "All right, let's use this gun arm. How do I do it, kid?" And Igor is like, "You just kind of point at it with your gun fingers and go." <laughs> yeah it's like a phantom limb kind of thing like he's just like in your brain think about holding your hand out like a gun and doing the finger guns basically and that and he does it and like you know a giant laser shoots out of the gun and just like destroys the tree i mean it look listen with the the effects they use it looks like it shrinks the tree down to nothing <laughs> but yeah, yeah sure maybe it disintegrates it i don't know yeah, it's... It's what you know, they could afford. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, while this is going on, this is where we kind of get this introduction where back at camp, 
Virginia is like, at one point I thought I could have married Solomon, but I think I'm falling for you now, Alan. Oh no, this is the falling in love with your grandmother type thing, isn't it? <laughs> right. And then to kind of echo what happened at the beginning, uh, Virginia kisses Alan and Solomon sees. No. And, you know, but this time, you know, it is Virginia kissing Alan, so Solomon does have a reason to be jealous here. Yeah. But I think this gives Alan the opportunity that, like, hey, sometimes kisses happen and maybe everybody is not fully on board with them. Right. And, you know, maybe benefit of the doubt is a good thing to give people in those situations. Right. Of course, Solomon, this is, goes back to the, the rivalry slash love hate between Alan and Solomon because Solomon's like, well, fuck you. And uh, then we kind of just, what, cut to the next day, right? Where they're all mm -hmm. lining up for formation. And Alan, yeah. Alan's trying to play it off. He's like, hey, man, uh, you know. I, uh, you know, I didn't think you'd be here so early. And Solomon's like, yeah, you're kind of late. <laughs> and why the <laughs> fuck are you here? You should be back with the women. Ah, uh, because <laughs> yeah. insulting his masculinity, saying he's like a, I guess the, the military term would be a Jody. Mm, which okay. Is, you know, it's someone who muscles in on someone else's girlfriend or spouse. Uh, okay. So anyway. Uh, and, and like Solomon's pretty much just like, once this war is over, I'm, I'm going to kill, kill you. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Then, like, to really just hammer explicitly what's going on here, like, the soldiers are all lined up. The Union commander is like, all right, guys, we got to protect the Frankenstein with the flower at all costs. Well, I do like that they actually lampshade why he's even there. Like, because, like, someone's like, so why don't we just, like, move him to the back? Well, if he's too far away, he can't control them. Mm, that's going to come in later. <laughs> but I have, a, I have a strong disagreement with that right now. Yeah, I mean, earlier he flew away in a hot air balloon right. and was still controlling him. Well, in the future, yeah, he'll be f miles away mm -hmm. and still can control them just fine. Yeah. So, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so then Walton shows up, and we get this really weird scene that, that's kind of badass, but like it, it feels like there's something kind of missing. Mm -hmm. Walton like strolls in, sets a like a camp chair down in the middle of the field and just sits down. Right. And, like, his, you know, the corresponding union captain walks out there, and they have a conversation, and we don't hear it. We have no idea what this conversation's about, and it never really, uh, like, it's not like something comes up from it later. Like, it's just, like, they have a chat, and then Walton walks off, and his, in, uh, you know, yeah. big monster well, comes in, out. Well, in my head canon, like, the union guy's like, come on, man, you're making us all look bad just walking out here and sitting down in a chair. Be fucking <laughs> responsible about this war. <laughs> Take it seriously. <laughs> you know, but yeah, as you said, Walton gets up in a huff, walks off, takes his chair, and like as soon as he's at a certain spot, he flags in his monster to just come in and wreck house. Mm hmm. This is our, our big battle. Um, like, pretty much. So the, the Union captain is walking back to the troops, and our, uh, you know, Swanson. Confederate zombie monster just rips his head off before he even gets to the troops. Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty amazing. Mm hmm. So at that point, the battle begins. This is, it's just awesome. Like, there's just tons of gore, monsters killing each other, and soldiers. Igor pulls out his lightning rod and is using it like a, like a bow, bow staff. staff. Yeah, he's got bow yeah. staff skills, man. Yeah, and he's good. Like, he's doing flips and shit with it. Like, he's awesome. Right, and then we also get to see, uh, we kind of, uh, later on we're going to get an Avengers moment, but it, it's kind of an Avengers moment now. Where, you know, even Alan's doing pretty good at fighting, and then we have uh, Solomon, who's just fucking Mega Manning it up. Mm -hmm. He's just, like, firing, do, 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 even posing. Like, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, this is the good shit for mm -hmm. sure. But then Maggie and Virginia are helping a fallen soldier, and we see that Maggie kind of surreptitiously takes the guy's knife and yeah. hides it. Why, why is she tucking away that knife? That's weird, man. Yeah, yeah, that seems strange. Or fucking shadows again, shit. <laughs> yeah. And so then we've got, like, the, the battle is kind of, like, coalescing. We've got all of the Frankensteins, and they are surrounding Captain Walton and Lieutenant Zombie. Okay, I do have to say one thing. My favorite, absolute favorite kill of this scene, right before they all co coalesce, is when one of the good monsters shoves his hand into a guy's stomach, pulls out his intestines, and hangs another soldier by that man's intestines. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's creative. That's the shit I came here to see. Yeah. Yep. 
But yeah, it's so it's weird because it's like it looks like the battle's gonna be over. The the Frankenstein's win, and then Maggie comes up behind Frankenstein Prime and s- literally stabs him in the back. back. Boo, Maggie, boo. So, you know, he falls to the ground and all of the other Frankensteins do as well. And then Solomon tries to use his cannon to fire or to hit Lieutenant Zombie, but he gets knocked down as well. So at this point, it's like, you know, it looks like the battle's over, you know, like the Confederacy has won. Like the Frankensteins are all kind of incapacitated. So is Solomon. But then they just leave. Right. Well, they also... The monster, after, it also bats away Maggie, right? It bats away Maggie. Solomon tries to come in. That's when he gets bat away and his cannon gets broke. So then, yeah, they're, they're just leaving. And, you know, uh, Virginia goes to check on Maggie. And it turns out when she fell, she landed on the knife. So now she's dying. Rough. Uh, but, but yeah, I, don't, I do not understand why they, like, why? Uh, they could have just winning. Yeah, they could have just wrecked house there and, and won the war. Or, you know, won this battle at least. Um, but they, like, let... This, you know, the Union, you know, limp away to, to fight another day here. Yeah, well, fuck them. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm glad, but yeah. <laughs> it just seems like a strange choice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, you, you don't normally stop when you're winning, right? Yeah. So then we just cut away to a messenger arriving at the White House to deliver a battlefield drawing of all the Frankensteins Wait, to President Lincoln. President damn Lincoln? By the way, that that White House is absolutely a miniature that they superimposed. It doesn't. It does not look great. Yeah, it's not the worst, but it's not great. But yes, we have President Lincoln in this movie. Are you serious? The guy they got. Does, I mean, it's a pretty good Lincoln. Like he he does look pretty similar, and they really kind of emphasize it because like there's a guy painting Lincoln's portrait during this and Mm -hmm. the portrait is just literally, you know, a portrait that you've seen of Lincoln. Like, um, and you know, you get a good joke where Lincoln looks at it and he's like, it's pretty close. It doesn't look exactly like me. Right. But, but also, so Abe's fought vampires or he's hunted vampires. And now he's, he's clearly, you know, enlisted (laughs) Frankenstein monsters. Uh, (laughs) where, where the werewolves? Come on guys. Mm, yeah i'm just saying and this movie does feel like it's of a piece with the abraham lincoln vampire (laughs) hunter and like the pride and prejudice and zombies Mm -hmm. and all that like it's it it definitely has some similar vibes right well yeah so in this at this point uh as the battlefield reports being uh given to president lincoln he's like hey bring the alan jones guy and uh igor and their monster to the white house i want to enlist them for for something else yeah, I've got a mission that I need them for. Only they. They're the only ones who can do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, we cut to Captain Walton with his zombie lieutenant, and they go talk to a general, and they're like, the battle was unsuccessful. And again, I'm like, It's pretty How? successful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the general's like, well, it doesn't matter because the war is not going to be won on the battlefield anyway. Yeah, we've already lost. Yeah, head to D.C. I've got a mission for you there. Ask for Mr. Booth. Booth. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> this yeah. son of a bitch. By the way, he's this in this movie, he is a glorious bastard. <laughs> the, the, actor, the actor who played him did a wonderful job. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Mm-hmm. So then at that point, we're, we're back at the battlefield and Alan's like, Hey Solomon, hey Virginia, you guys should totally get married. Right, get out of the blue. Just, you guys should get married. Just get, get together. And they're like, "Why are you so concerned with it?" He's like, "Well, I'm pretty sure you're my great great grandparents, so <laughs> right. I want to be born." Which, right? Okay, fair enough. And then um, somebody shows up with a telegram for Alan. Uh, it's the summons from Lincoln, mm-hmm. and and Alan like Alan is like how we would be in this moment. Like he's he's just like. This is from Abraham fucking Lincoln, like the, on the penny. The guy on the penny sent me a telegram. All right, and everyone else is like, "Calm down, buddy." <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he's like, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna go talk to Abraham Lincoln." Also, Igor hands Solomon a weird bag, and he's like, "Hey, whatever you do, don't open till I'm gone." Yeah. And Solomon's like, "Okay, that's that's a little suspicious," but he's like, "All right, I'll I'll hang on to it until later." Mm-hmm. And then Frankenstein Prime goes and finds Virginia in the woods, and she's, like, upset, and he's kind of, like, comforting her. 
uh, and she's like, is Alan right? Like, what, am I supposed to marry Solomon? Like, I, I feel like I've, I'm developing these feelings for Alan, um, but do I have, is there like some kind of destiny? I don't understand. Um, and then we get a, re a really great scene with Solomon that's like unexpected for the time and for this kind of movie in general. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just, he just, uh, you know, overhears this this conversation, or her, it's not really a conversation, it's just her bouncing off of the, the monster. Um, but he's like, don't, you know, do what your heart tells you. Like, I've, I've loved you a long time and I've wanted to marry you, but I can't tell you how to feel. Um, you're free. Like, yeah. and it, it's like a dual thing. Like, you know, you were enslaved and now you're not. But also, you know, just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you have to do what the men want you to do either. So, right. like, both as a, a black person and as a woman, you are free to make your own choices here. So it's, it's a pretty good... Uh, moment for Solomon. Yeah, this movie's definitely surprising in that kind of way. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. a lot of heart there, but aside from you know the pun, but uh, you know, <laughs> it definitely shows you that you can have a dumb, trashy movie that's not really offensive for the most part. Right. Like it's, uh, yeah, like you said, it, it's it's just pure. It's got a good heart. Um, you know, it's going to have a lot of gore and a lot of dumb stuff, but it's yeah, it's not mean or cruel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we cut to. Um, Igor, Alan, and the monster at the White House talking to President Lincoln. Of course, Alan's fanboying. And he's like, oh my gosh, it's really Honest Abe. And Abraham Lincoln's <laughs> yeah. like, I like that. I like that name. Honest Abe. Right. Yeah, I'm going to have to use that. Yeah. While Alan and Igor are talking to Lincoln, Virginia sends Frankenstein to, to join them. Mm -hmm. The other Frankensteins. Frankenstein, yeah. Right, yeah, because... Alan, Igor, and the main Frankenstein are together, and Virginia sends the army of Frankensteins to follow. Right. Of course, Solomon's uh, kind of like, uh, do we have to do this? Why can't we just sit back? And she's like, I'm going. <laughs> so if you want to come along, come on. Yeah. Uh, so then, yeah, we get Lincoln telling them, you know, the, the mission. They need to go find Captain Walton and figure out what he's up to. Right. What him, what he's doing in, the, in Washington, D.C., by the way, I, I did you ever play the video game Bad Dudes? Like, this is an old Nintendo game. It, no, I don't of, think so. All right, well, the beginning of it is like the president has been kidnapped, you know, and we think you're the you you're the only ones who can save him. Are you a bad <laughs> enough dude to accept the mission? <laughs> and that's literally what I was thinking. I was like, Are you a bad enough dude to accept the president's mission? <laughs> it's very nineties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so, so of course, Igor has some way to track the uh, the lieutenant's nanobots. Right, he just uh, straight up plucks the eyeball out of the monster, which arguably would blind, to a degree, uh, Alan as well. But no, right. he's got a special microchip that he slaps on that sucker, and apparently that could just activate uh, Alan's eye, or Alan's sight at any time. The great thing is, you know, we, we mentioned earlier he had the mad scientist goggles. Yeah. So he tucks the eyeball into one of one side of the goggles and puts them on. He's straight up mad eye booty. Mm hmm And it also made me think of, like, Igor from Igor. Young... Like, it makes him look like he's, like, got weird eyes like a an Igor usually would. Right. So, or this often is, does, I should say. That would be the anti-turf version, I guess. <laughs> Igor, yeah. He goes into the saloon kind of like trying to be sneaky and is like scouting. And, you know, of course, Alan can see through the eye what's going on as well. It comes out at this time that we got this guy who, who looks very suspicious and familiar flirting with a uh, bunch of ladies and talking to Walton. Turns out that guy's going to help kill the president in a couple days. Yep. Mm. So yep. here's our Mr. John Wilkes Booth. You know, Igor's like, uh-oh. But then... <laughs> A, a bartender sees him and is like, hey, kid, what are you doing in here? Get out of here. His cover's blown. Yeah, Walton sees him and starts firing at him as he's, you know, running out of the bar mm -hmm. and manages to hit him. So he falls to the ground outside of the saloon and tells Alan that, like, you know, all the Frankensteins have to die before the portal can open. Right, so go back to your own time. Yeah, and Alan's like, I want to go home, but, like, I, I don't want you to die. I don't I don't want Frankenstein to die. Like, he's helped us. Like, I, I don't... He doesn't deserve to die just so that I can get back to Ashley. You know, I, I just realized something, Anthony. I think Walton has completion anxiety. <laughs> because, like, he could have won that one battle, right? 
Mm. And if he just stayed out here just a second so, or so longer, he could have also killed Alan and probably the monster. Yeah, true. Hmm. Yeah, he definitely is short-sighted. There, yeah. There's something going on there. I mean, maybe that's a statement. I don't know. It seems pretty accurate <laughs> to me. Yeah. Well, the monster also cries whenever Igor dies. Mm-hmm. And all of the monsters then cry. Yeah. And they start kind well, of rushing Washington, D.C. at this point. Yeah, they're they're getting closer. We see this big mob of them, and they're yeah, they're all responding in the same way that the, the Prime one is. Mm-hmm. We cut back to Alan talking to Lincoln, and he's like... This was such a waste of time. We sent this kid to die on a mission that anybody who's been through fifth grade social studies knows. (laughs) Like, this is a, just don't go to the theater. John Wilkes Booth is going to kill you. Stay home and the problem solved. Right. Of course, Abraham Lincoln's like, well, does the history books mention you and this monster? (laughs) Well, no. Okay, then. I think we have, you know, we can, we're good. (laughs) Yeah, we can change the history books. Yeah. And he's insistent that like he has to go to the theater to sh- be seen by the American people and show that he's not afraid. I don't know that that's necessarily true, but okay, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess they couldn't think of any other reason right? why he would go. <laughs> they had to make up something. No, he has to go, even though he's been warned ahead of time. <laughs> right. Then we get like behind the theater, we have the, the zombie lieutenant and Frankenstein Prime fighting... Yeah, the, uh, in the Walton, like in Walton the alley. crew stumbles upon Alan and crew, and yes, we have a monster fight! <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Booth manages to kind of sneak away and go into the theater while the fight's going on. Okay, that's bullshit. <laughs> Alan just kind of <laughs> let him slip in. Yeah, and it's like, that's the, that, you had one job. Yeah, right, <laughs> you slept on it, Alan. You're fucking yeah. up, man. <laughs> In the midst of the, the monster fight, uh, Walton fires at Frankenstein Prime, hits him in the shoulder, and all the Frankensteins get shoulder wounds at the same time. Mm-hmm. Then Alan does go into the theater chasing after Booth, but Booth knocks him down, and then um, our Lieutenant Zombie hits Frankenstein Prime and knocks him out, Right, uh, which KOs the entire army of Frankensteins. <laughs> As Virginia and Solomon arrive. Mm-hmm. So at least we have some people that can do their jobs, maybe. I don't know. All I'm saying yeah. is Team Frankenstein's not, not doing great right now. <laughs> yeah. And Solomon... Uh, so we, we didn't say... So when Solomon got knocked down in the previous fight, his cannon got damaged, and Igor repaired it, but he was like, it's probably only good for one, one more, more shot. shot. Um, but here he's trying to shoot Lieutenant Zombie, and it's not really go Like, it's not working. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, inside, Alan has has gotten up and is continuing to fight Booth. And we do get a pretty great line from him where he's like, you're an actor, right? And Booth's like, yeah, why? And he's like, break, break a leg! leg. <laughs> and kicks his leg. It's yeah. really good. But then yeah. they, they, get in a, uh, they get in a sword fight. Or a cane mm-hmm. fight to begin with. Turns out that Booth's cane is a sword. Sword cane? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. Alan, yeah, Alan's like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> right. He just has like a regular stage cane, which is very flimsy. Yeah. Frankenstein Prime gets up. He goes into the theater while the other Frankensteins continue to fight Walton and Lieutenant Zombie. Well, one thing we didn't mention was that also at the end of the fight, uh, Booth manages to cut one of the uh, ropes and literally drops a sandbag on uh, Alan's head. So that's that's a pretty good gag because like one drops and Alan's like, I thought you knew your way around here. And Booth's like, I do know my way around the theater. And then the second one drops and chaos. him. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's just a lot going on. This, this is a very I mean it's it's well choreographed. Like you're never confused, but wow. there's just a lot going on. Right, but like you said, uh Frank Prime basically gets up, sneaks into the theater, and Walton's like, "Damn it, Swanson, you had one job." <laughs> right. So then we have Frankenstein Prime trying to protect Lincoln, and then Booth shoots Frankenstein instead of Lincoln. Mm-hmm. But when Frankenstein falls back, he hits Lincoln and knocks, knocks him off, off the balcony anyway. No, and I was like, oh, okay, that's how they kill Lincoln. Well, it turns out that's not exactly how they do it because <laughs> uh, then Frankenstein starts stumbling back, falls over the banister, and lands directly on Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. So that's an undignified way to go. Yeah, yeah. crushed by Frankenstein <laughs> is not the way you expect Lincoln to go out. No, and of course... Wilkes Booth is like, I won! And he goes, six simper! And then 
boom, he explodes into a pile of dust. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so finally Solomon was able to get his uh, his cannon working again, and he definitely used it well. Did we skip the part where um, Walton pisses off Swanson enough that Swanson's just like, eh, fuck him up, Frankenstein monsters? I think we did. Uh, I, th- I think that hasn't... I don't... No, yeah, that oh, that does happen. Yeah, because it's like that happens while Solomon and Virginia are kissing. Right. Um, yeah, you know, it is just like there's so many things happening at once. Right. Sorry, we skipped uh, the death of Walton, which is, he gets <laughs> torn to shreds by Frankenstein monsters. Yeah, As, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, but Swanson just walks out of the picture. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> happened to him, I don't know. In, in the sequel bait, I guess. <laughs> right. And Alan then, like, goes to... Frankenstein Prime, who's laying on the ground dying from his injuries, and Alan's like, you know, no, stay, you know, stay with me, don't die. And Frankenstein is like, no, go home. Like he's, you know, he's accepted that he's dying, and he's like, this is your chance. Like you can go back to where you belong. Right, Frankenstein, go home. <laughs> Sorry, ET reference. I apologize. <laughs> right. Solomon's like, you know, you don't have to go back. You could stay here with us, which is like a big step because Solomon's kind of hated Alan this whole time. Uh, and Alan's like, nah, I've got a girl back home that I owe five dollars to. That's a pretty good line. Yeah, and he's like, but Solomon, you know, if there's anybody you're interested in, you know, d- hold on to them. Don't give up on love, you know. And and Solomon's like, all right, I, I I got somebody. And he like, you know, grabs hold of Virginia. And so it's like everybody's kind of finding love here at the end, right? And, of course, as Alan leaves, it's like, we won this war thanks to you and Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and as Alan's, like, vanishing in through, through the ether, he's like, just have lots of babies. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that's a hell of a thing to say. Okay, makes sense. Sure, why not? So then when Alan appears in the portal, like loops back a little bit. So when he appears, the earlier version of him is just going through the portal and he stops Igor and he's like, don't go through there. Just stay here. You're going to die if you go through there. And he's like, yeah, but would you have survived if I didn't? And he's like, I don't know, but you know, you don't deserve to die. So don't go. Right. And Igor's kind of like, nope, I got to do it. And yeah, I got to do what I got to do. So he keeps go. you know, he goes in yeah. and Alan yells after him, just don't go into the tavern. <laughs> right. Well... Clearly he does, because that's right. how we can, yeah. Um, and so then we cut to Alan just running to the grocery. Um, he bumps into his landlady again in the parking lot. And, you know, she's like, you still owe me money, Alan. What's up? And he's like, here, just take the ring. Fuck it. I don't care. Like, you're, you know. Right. Miss Henderson slide, slides on the finger and's like, Mrs. Jones. <laughs> it's like, yeah, maybe. Who knows? And then he's like, actually, can I borrow five bucks? <laughs> yeah. And she's like... Are you kidding me? Seriously? Fi- okay, fine, whatever. Of course she pulls it out of her bra. Yeah. You know. And so Alan comes strolling in. He sees Eugene and immediately just punches him in the face. Which, respectable, because like just a second ago, Eugene saw a very attractive lady walk into the store. He's like, we got a, we got a code 10. Oh, we got a code 10. Ah, over it. Yeah, he's just the worst. Gross, and like, yeah. so I think you know at this point, I think Alan understands that whatever happened with Eugene and Ashley earlier was it's all Eugene. You know, fault. it's yeah, Eugene's fault. Yeah, so he apologizes. He he takes the intercom and he has trouble getting it to work. And you know, star the, seven. Yeah, the kid at the cash register is like, yeah, you dial star seven. So he starts apologizing to Ashley over the intercom, and she comes to him while he's still apologizing. While she's right there in front of him, he proposes, and she's just like, no. no. <laughs> Which, good for her, you know? Yeah. Basically, yeah, was she's a... like, we're both fucking messes. You're, you're yeah. broke. I'm broke. I'm, I work at a dead-end job. No. Yeah, you just got fired from this job. You can't afford rent. No. Like, you know, no. Like, I, I like you, but, like... Ask me again later. Like, you know, give it some time. And he's like, all right, that that works. And so they kiss. And he's like, oh, by the way, here's the $5 I owe you. Hey. And then we see it, and it's got Frankenstein on it. Whoa, President Frankenstein, what? <laughs> and, of course, that's when it cuts out to <laughs> the first credits. But wait, because this is in the age of Marvel movies, we're, we're going to get a stinger. Mm-hmm. It turns out he's taking a look at that the uh, the what forgotten ancestors <laughs> information. 
Yeah, and see, you know, looks up Solomon and finds out that he did marry Virginia. But they didn't have a they, kid. They adopted some kid named Igor Jones. Yep. So Alan's like, wait, h- how did that happen? And then we cut back 150, 150 years earlier. Years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so Solomon pulls out, um, you know, what Igor had given him, which is the yeah, lightning rod. Yeah. So he goes over and jams it into Igor's grave. By the way, no storms, I don't think. There's not a single <laughs> lightning flash at all until this moment. Yeah, and then lightning immediately strikes the lightning rod, and then Eeyore's hand bursts out of the grave, carry style, and right. grabs the lightning rod. Right. So this begs the question, so is Igor Alan's ancestor? I think so. I think that's the That's the, the implication, implication, right? There. Yeah. I still hope my, my thing is true, too, to though, like where Alan and Ashley do get together, have a kid, somehow ends up in a dumpster don't know or the old doc you know ends up in a time portal and gets abducted by the doctor goes back in time and <laughs> recursive loop so then you think that igor had to drink the liquid so that the lightning yes. would revive him 100%. okay that's exactly that, what happened in my that opinion. makes sense because you know we did we wouldn't know it but he knew that he was going to die right And Mm -hmm. even right as he's going into the tavern, he's like, I kind of have to do this. (laughs) Yeah. This is the thing I have to do. So he knew. He knew what was up. So, yeah, the ending, I mean, and, like, Igor wears, like, fingerless gloves the whole time because he's just, like, a little kind of punk kid. So you see that hand come out of the grave. It just looks really cool. It's a great way to go out. Yeah. And then the the remaining credits roll over a um, an original kind of new metal-ish song called Mm -hmm. Army of Frankensteins. (laughs) Amazing. That's like, yeah, cheesy as hell, but yeah, I mean, exactly the way that this movie needed to go out. Right. Ah, uh, you love, you gotta love it. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else to be said about it? Yeah, I mean, this one, you know, we're not gonna, you're not gonna dig in and find any deep themes in this one. It's no. just a silly, fun popcorn movie. Uh, you know, it has some slavery stuff in it that's handled as pretty delicately, but you know, has a couple little missteps, yeah. but you know, nothing. Nothing horribly egregious. Right. Um, so, yeah, for a, a, like you said, not even a B movie, like a C or D movie, right. y- you're going to have a good time and, you know, you don't have to think too much on this one. Yeah. It's just, there's going to be a couple moments where you're like, really? <laughs> that's our, <laughs> that's a choice that was made? Okay. But yeah. then there are other times when you're like, all right, I'm, I'm in this movie. Especially when you, uh, you get the hyped up army of Frankensteins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Anthony. So... I mean, we've seen a, you know, army of Frankensteins. But maybe next time we can see Frankenstein's army. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun. <laughs> so we're continuing this little, like, military right. quest we're on. Um, this one I have seen before, and it has a very different vibe. Um, <laughs> we're going to we're gonna head to uh, World War II uh, and get to fight the other, you know, yeah. history's great bad guy <laughs> yeah. army. Um, so, yep, so join us for, for Frankenstein's army next week. Uh, and it's, it's a little darker, a little bit more grim, but it's also still weird and dumb and, you know, <laughs> It's it's fun in its own way. Yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta expect it, right? Yeah, fair enough. All right, Anthony. In that case, where can they find us? Uh, yeah. So you can find us, uh, you know, on all the socials, mainly Twitter and Instagram uh, at the Frankencast. Uh, you can also email us at the Frankencast at gmail dot com. You can find us over on YouTube and Reddit. Um, and you can also find us at patreon.com slash the Frankencast. Yeah. We appreciate you all in these trying times. Thank yeah, you all and, for you being know, with us. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely, you know, we, we love all of our listeners, but we definitely appreciate the support there. Um, any kind of support, if you can do rates and reviews, we love those as well, or, you know, just any kind of engagement. Um, but yep, we you know if you can spare a couple bucks, we, we've got a lot of bonus content for you over on the Patreon that we think you'll enjoy. Oh yeah, a lot of fun stuff over there. I believe there's a, there's a few things with the bride, right? Yep, yeah, she you know we, we uh, introduced her into the main feed pretty recently, but mm-hmm. yeah, we've got three episodes I think um, where we dig yeah. into some do some deep dives into things we kind of skimmed the surface of in main feed episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, 
uh, you convinced me to watch a whole anime series what? and it was awesome as hell like, <laughs> yeah. it was so good so we talked about the yeah. uh, cyberpunk plenty of monster stuff you know we yeah it's all kinds of odds and ends so yeah. definitely love to have you over there i mean we even have a little biblical discussion <laughs> in one of them. <laughs> true so if you're into that no. <laughs> yep all right well can you believe we actually uh finished this about 20 minutes earlier than the actual movie takes what <laughs> and on that note to be continued <laughs>